Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about the thing that ticks me off the most in everyday software development. So let's get into it. This is a good, good question because I'm, I'm going to try my best not to go on a rant or anything like that because, uh, well, I don't know why, but it, I don't want you to get the wrong impression. I really love my job and I really, really love programming just in general. It is my profession and it is my hobby. It's something, I mean, we're here talking because I love it so much. And I just need to express those uh, thoughts and feelings to other people and share them, even if you didn't ask for it. Anywho, so apart from having a great appreciation and love for all of the things that is IT related, there are a few things and this is true for any industry, every single profession, I don't care if you're a rock star or like a movie star or something like that, there's always something that can be improved or something that sucks with every single single thing, thing. nothing is perfect, right? But for me, in so, uh, specifically in software development, the thing that ticks me off the most, hands down, it just, there's nothing that pisses me off more, is when really shitty decisions affect my job. It is the worst thing that I know. It is when I, when I am forced to compromise or to hack shit together or I'm forced to basically add legacy to a project because some fucking person decided to either be really clever or decided that they were going to be, um, they were going to half-ass a job or something like that. There are so many situations where, where this happens, where because some person didn't take the time to actually do things properly, I now am forced into a situation where I just have to add even more shit on top of to, to the legacy pile. And I can feel the problem just growing and growing and growing. And it really helps if it's a, if it gets to a point where it's so uh, it, the short term win, which is like this, if that that's the thing that pisses me off about softwares, devel software developers, that's something that the software developers cause, like you make a really shit implementation or you tr think that you're being smart and you implement shit that is um, <clears throat> maybe clever for your little specific use case right here and now and then six months later you oversaw the fact that hey shit actually changed and now you have created a situation where it was perfect for one very one dimensional problem <clears throat> but you completely failed to understand that the problem that you were solving was more universal than that and now you have caused the problem for everybody else and now we have to hack your solution together and the final product 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 of or the results of your little clever thing is that we actually have just a really shitty implementation for both cases both for your case and for the case that we now have so that's what the software engineers do and the shittiest part about working in software development when it comes to management is that if a software developer does that and the solution to the problem that they solve is complicated enough that the time estimate to fix it gets to what I call a critical point. And the critical point is that sweet spot of time investment that is required where it cannot be done in a day, it cannot be done in two days, it may not even be possible to do it in a week. If you ever get to that point, management will almost, almost always tell you that, yeah, because refactoring is the thing that is on everybody's mind when this happens. That's what every program, especially the juniors, this is where they really get a wake up call. So what they will see, you see is that, oh, this code is really ugly. We should really fix it. And I tell them, yeah, yeah, great. Go to your manager and say that you need two weeks to fix that because that's usually, or say a month, depending on like if it's a really, really ugly thing. I have a feature like that right now where I know for a fact that it's the one of those and I will tell you about it because this is like the basis of my fr frustration these days. But they will naively go to the manager and say, yeah, we need to rewrite this because this code is really ugly. And, I, and you, th this, it, it, well, this is what always happens. And they will say, oh yeah, they will ask, how long does it take? And then you say, well, it's gonna take X amount of time. And then they will get a little bit of frowny face on their face because anything that isn't a day or measured in like hours that needs fixing that isn't directly connected to revenue or 
product delivery or anything like that, if it's anything that is in terms of maintenance or anything like that, unless and you say that you need this amount of time to solve that problem, they will immediately weigh that against all the other stuff that you have to do in the backlog. And since it's a, it's not a short term win, and you, here's the big fucking secret, guys, not every problem that is severely impacting your, your, uh, your situation at work or every piece of legacy code can be solved in a day. It's not possible to really solve a problem in that amount of time, every time. But everybody thinks in terms of short-term wins. The politicians are doing that as well. Why would there be any difference between the managers at the company? Everybody's in for the short-term wins. And the problem with that is that sometimes you cannot get a short-term win. You cannot just do it in a day, but it's still very important to get it done. And this is the fact of that. That's the fact of the matter. And then the thing that always happens happens. You have now reached what I call the critical point. And that is that the legacy code has grown so big that the time to fix it is just not worth it in, in comparison to just keep just keep you know uh, keeping on trucking in the exact same way you already are and this is why and this is all all of this all of it is caused by this one single problem and that is that the developer didn't do their job correctly and i'm not saying that you didn't do like try to make a good implementation i'm saying that you didn't have the experience, you didn't have the foresight, or you did for some reason not have the ability to understand that you being clever in this specific feature, in this specific region, or doing this in this specific way, ha is going to have a very li high likelihood of impacting somebody else down the line. And that is the shitty, I mean, the easiest thing is somebody writes a really bad CSS. That's a classic one. You rewrite bad CSS. And you do a bunch of global state mutations, as an example. And now I come in and I need to change a feature, or I need to add something and so forth. But because of the, because of the way that you structured your CS, CSS, I have now one of two choices. And this is just in front end. This happens in every single area of programming. I have two choices. Either I fix your mess so that it does, so that it, it basically keeps on doing the thing that you wanted it to do, but it does so in such a way that it doesn't actually fuck up everything for everybody else. Uh, or I hack it. And that is usually how it goes. That is exactly how legacy starts. You create a situation where somebody has a, t has a time restriction and the manager says, I need it by today. And they say, well, no, because of the situ this situation here, I mean, we've already built it this way. So I'm going to need several, like I might need a week to do this. And they say, no, uh, you need to just kind of, you need to hack it together you need, we, because we need it today. And that's the thing that programmers don't fucking get. Like really shitty programmers don't understand this. And that's why it's so important for you to understand what type of feature you are working on. I have that situation these days where I had a, um, we, had a, we had to make a compromise regarding a translation system. And uh, anybody who know, as I've said in a few videos before, if you have any understanding of real software engineering, you will know what a critical feature is and what a what I call a peripheral, per, peripheral feature is. Because some features, some code that you write is what we, is backbone code. It is the sort of code that affects everything in the entire code base. Translations is just such a thing. Having an international project means having multiple languages. Multiple languages means that it's going to be tied into every single piece of user facing code that you have. That is what we call a backbone feature. It's the same thing as the web framework. It is a foundation type of thing, right? And then you have features that are maybe, you know, you do some one specific integration or you do some one specific feature like a logging page or something like that. That's another type of feature. It's a very isolated single block of that the entire project. So you have things that span the whole project, affects every single decision that you make. And then you have things that just affects one single story. And of course, we, you know, you get a shit implementation with something as foundational as uh, translations. And now the problem is that you need, because of the limitations of the implementation, you are now compromised on every single decision that you make that doesn't perfectly fit into the implementation that you have. And that is the suckiest fucking situation to be in because now you basically have to almost every other story you have to hack stuff together 
or you have to write code in a manner that is suboptimal for the rest of the project just to accommodate the shit implementation of this core feature or this core and this core thing. And it doesn't matter how frustrated you are because the only thing you can do is to live with this situation and just warn and inform and say that we really need to, to change this. And all the, all the while, all that happens is that you get told over and over that, oh yeah, yeah, you really are right, we should really fix this, but we have this other project here that needs to be done this week and the thing that you're suggesting is going to take a month. And it never gets fixed. And this is the sort of thing that it leads to, like this is the sort of thing that everybody in IT talks about, everybody's super scared of, but the managers just seem to never ever get when you have such a problem in the, in the, city, in the company. And that is, we talk about legacy, we talk about having good programmers and everybody really needs to have the best and the brightest in the industry and they need these people because they're afraid that if they get shitty developers, they're going to start slowing down the development process with their shitty code. But when you get to that situation, Situation, when you actually have somebody who comes and says, we have one of these features right now. This is like, because the, uh, as I, I've said it myself, that sort of problem, having translations and, and a translation process that doesn't really work, that's the shit that slows down entire, an entire company. That's exactly the sort of thing that slows down everybody. But nothing gets done. We try to hire people, but nobody cares because it takes more time to fix that than it takes to just ignore it and continue with the next thing. And it sucks. It sucks so much. And it pisses me off no, to no end. And all that needs to happen is that either management needs to listen to the experienced programmers who are warned about this, or the programmers who are implementing shit needs to actually be the sort of people who respect their work enough to really think about what the hell they're doing every step of the way. Maybe it is unreasonable to ask for perfection from a programmer because that's basically what we are asking for. We are asking a programmer to almost perfectly predict every time they sit down and write code, the impact of what they are doing and how that's going to look in six months. Some programmers are very good at this. You get good at this with practice, but some are not. And the question is, is it reasonable to ask that? I don't have a good solution to this. I really don't because I understand the needs to under deliver value as well. And I understand the management perspective, but yeah, I don't have a good, so a good solution to this. To me, this is as problematic to solve as world peace. It's a conflict of interests. And the problem isn't that we can't solve it. It's just that people have different desires and they pri prioritize their own needs over that of what is good for the whole. That's something that pisses me off in a in a day-to-day -day basis. So what I want you to take away from this is that basically the thing that pisses me off is when somebody makes a really shitty implementation or a really bad decision at one point, they don't respect their work enough, they don't actually know what the hell they're doing, they're building something in a fashion that is really, really suboptimal, and then it starts snowballing on you. It starts affecting my work in the next story and then because I can't, I'm not allowed the time to actually fix it in an efficient manner or anybody else is allowed to do that because of management and short-term wins, I am forced to hack it either even further and then the next person comes along and I have they have to hack it and then the next person has to hack it and it just continues until you have a big blob of shitty code that makes you slower as a company and it makes people frustrated and you might actually start to lose people. Like the onboarding process, like getting new people and stuff like that gets more tiresome and it takes longer just to teach people all this legacy code. And you might actually, as I said, start to lose developers because the code is so shitty. Solve that one. Have a great day.